alttabme.com presents podcast number four, SPVP. Welcome. <laughs> Come on, this time really cheer, goddammit. <laughs> yeah! Today we're going to be talking about the structured PvP in Guild Wars 2. From a casual perspective, I hope you're ready, because I know we are. And here we go. <laughs> We're getting lamer and lamer. <laughs> lamer or more awesome. Or more uh, that's awesome. That's both. Mix of both. I think yes. more awesome. <laughs> So SPVP, right. uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let me just talk about a couple things real quick that we like to go over prior to it. Um, as we all know, the last beta weekend is coming up uh, next week and no, wait, this yeah, yeah. this this weekend, this weekend, this weekend, which is come on, guy, Friday, July twentieth. And it will be lasting all weekend. We have multiple beta keys to be giving away. We will be uh, dropping those into the chat channel. So if you are watching the stream on yeah. Twitch, sorry for you guys that are watching this on Wednesday now that it's been published to YouTube. Maybe I will throw one into the comments on Wednesday just for fun. Um, but if you were watching it live on Monday, which is when we always stream, 5.15 to 5.45 start time Eastern, um, exactly. Guild recruitment. I want to touch on that real quickly because I'm really not going to be plugging it as much as I used to be. We are two slots away from cap, literally. Two, sl two slots. As of this morning, we have two open slots. Um, we don't have any applications in for those two slots because we denied basically everyone today because their apps were just kind of... <laughs> so if you want to get in, you have a very small opening. Um, <clears throat> that might change once release comes, but we are going to close applications very, very soon and keep them closed until the game goes live because we want to get to know our members better. We want to have the members know us better, and we just feel like if we continue to add and add and add, it's just going to get too big, and nobody's really going to know anybody. So if you still want to apply, we have two slots left. AltTabMe.com, Arcanix, apply there. That about covers it, right, guys? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So let's yeah. talk about some just, uh, SPV. Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, just, you know, we say it every time. Really look at your app. Don't just willy-nilly throw one in. We are being very critical. Our last two slots are actually very important to us because you're the standard that we're holding everyone to. So please put in a good app if you're going to put in an app. Sounds good. Yes. And then Pretty the some effort. <clears throat> yes. Of course. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about SPVP for casuals. What does that mean, first of all? First of all, it means that our guild is more oriented, and just us in general, me, John, Bruce, Damien, we're, we love PVP, we love the competitiveness of it, but um, we definitely don't play it as hardcore as others would, and I think that it's important to see the approach of, of that, that kind of uh, mindset on PVP. So that's basically what it is. We're not gonna sit here and argue which is the best class makeup which is the best blah 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 what skills are overpowered what aren't which need to be revamped we're gonna talk about pvp in the way that we like it and that's the fun way so i mean when we're not saying it's not fun to be hardcore blah 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 we're just saying for us this is fun so let's yep. uh let's jump right in here and um bruce or John or Damien, do you want to start us off on the, the what is SPVP? All right, I'll actually just uh, jump right into this one. Uh, <clears throat> from previous games like WoW and all the other games, you'll have many different modes of PVP, the battlegrounds, the structured, and uh, that's what uh, this section of uh, Guild Wars 2 is all about. It's the small group, uh, eight person, five person, uh, um, game. It's a. Uh, oh God, I lost a word all of a sudden. Excuse me. Um, these games are. Uh, <laughs> it's oh, in wow. the beard. It's in the beard. Look for it. Look for it. It, it, it is. It's. 
Uh, it's not arena based, but it is um, Battlegrounds. No. Oh God. Oh for? God. How? What are you looking for? Oh God. It's not an arena, it's, it's but a it's a. No. 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 It's... Wow. What are you looking miserable. for? Here? I am miserable. <laughs> This is what I get for starting drinking before a podcast and not during a podcast. Yeah. Oh, it's objective based. There you objective go. There. Objective there based. We go. Thank you. All right. Sorry. All right. So, all right. So we're not going for top kills in these games where it's just like an Arathi Basin. You are node based. We only have two maps right now that we're able to try, and both of them had three nodes to control. If you hold two nodes. You're pretty much gonna have a solid You're gonna win, win if you continually hold two nodes. Uh, Not necessarily. Kills do count though. N kills do right. count. Yes. Um, for every node you hold, you get one point every two seconds. Every kill you get is ten points. <clears throat> so that there's a few different ways you can play these things, but overall, my my philosophy is. Nodes first, kills second. Okay, but then let's talk um, about the PVE but, element of it as well with the. Uh... The, the monsters, what the hell are they called? The, uh, the, the Svanir and the champions. Yeah. The champions, they're called yeah, champions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. On right. one of the maps, In, there uh, are what is the map? Forest of Frost Niflheim, I think it's called. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Or Niflheim or Niflhell, whatever. Yeah, whatever it's called. <laughs> In before the, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you shouldn't do a podcast on PvP. <laughs> Okay? <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Nipple hell. That's what it's called. Yes. Nipple so, hell. Okay, so the, anyway, that, hell, that, yes. that PvP map, there are two monsters that spawn in the middle of the game, in the beginning of the game, and close to the end of the game, um, depending on how fast you're capping points and how fast you know, you're getting close to the end. Um, and if you kill them, I believe they're worth 25 points each. And that can, that can significantly change the game. If... You kill both of those, that's 50 points for your team. And with a cap of 500 points to win, that's, you know, yeah. that's a good portion of what you're doing. That's, that's yeah. one-fifth of they, what you're doing. They also, yeah, they also buff you. You want to point out that you do get a buff. I don't yeah. remember the specifics of it off the top of my head, but you get a buff 50 from points each to all stats. Um, piece. Okay, yeah, I, I knew it was a general thing. Yeah, and you get a nice buff from that. It'll last you about a minute, I think, or something like that. So um, that's always good for we're using when you're taking the other objectives because they're sort of located in the central area of the map, so they're not too far and not too close to every um, all three of the ob objective points. So, you know, everyone usually goes for those when they're up and then uses the buff to take an objective, which is really helpful. Which so I, they but definitely I think... have strategic value. I have a I have a big issue with that, and this is like my only gripe with SPVP so far. It's I don't like that those monsters spawn right in the beginning because literally this is what you do: jump out of the gates, a, yeah. go kill the monster, and then go fight people. This is PVP. I want to jump out of the gates yeah. and go fight some people. I don't want to jump out of the gates and be like, oh, I gotta kill this monster, otherwise the other team's gonna get a one up on me. Fuck that shit. Because why don't you just start us I all off at fifty fifty, and then you know. I just think it's stupid. And then yeah. you've got these weird rush tactics, which feels a lot like StarCraft Zerging to me, where one team splits their team in half. They don't even go for their objectives, but half their team goes for their monster, and the other half goes for our monster. I, you know, I get it, but I don't like it. I just I don't think that that should be there. It feels very unskillful, and it feels a little more chancy, and, and so far PvP has been very skillful. I... And, yeah... I definitely have to agree Belinda. with you that. <laughs> I think it would. Uh, I think it. It would make more sense if it was more of a random sort of spawn, and at least if it didn't spawn right off the bat, so that it. It's sort of like an. Um, you know, something to go for, like a. You know, because it tells you that it spawns. You get a little. Um, sentence on your screen that says the ball, yeah. you know, the beast is up or whatever. So it could be a little bit of an incentive if you're losing and you need to take another point. You get that little buff, the extra oomph, and you go take out the boss. I think a, a bit of more randomness to it would uh, make it a, a lot better. In yeah, because right now you can kind of predict when they're going to come, and you you get a feeling, and you're you're like, okay, okay, I know the monster is going to come. Am I going to? Which this is where I like it actually. I like it in the middle of a match where you're sitting on a point and you're going. Okay, I know the boss is going to spawn in about 10 seconds. Do I stand on this point and get the ticking, or do I chance it and go try to fight that boss? 
what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And then it splits you guys up and it makes for an interesting little battle and you're not always stuck on points, mm. which I think that's really cool. But right in the beginning, there's just... You all have to go to your yeah. point and you all have to go kill the monster, so why even have it there? I don't know. That's just yeah, that's my opinion. The, you um, could disagree. I agree with the early, the early spawn. Uh, from playing things like Dota and, and League of Legends, those types of monsters exist in those games as well and they don't spawn immediately so there's no just crazy zerg rush for those um and i think that uh, having them spawn even even five minutes into the match so you've captured some points you've had a little bit of a duel whatever with you know, with the enemy team and then they spawn would be really good i think you, you just yeah. don't make it bam gates open bam they spawn zerg rush but you'll get a lot of people that will complain that if it goes on a random timer that it becomes unfair, you know, some people have a better opportunity, yada yada. So no, you, I agree you with you. have to make it, you know, a... Yeah, I agree. You I agree 100%. Make it a, some, some of time, yeah. But it's like, but, but make it in but the then... beginning. I mean, take it out of the beginning and have it at set times during mm -hmm. the match. X points. Yeah. Like, it's like spawn timers. Yeah, like maybe two minutes after all three points have been captured or something like that. Yeah. You know, so you, so the main objective is the objective nodes rather than waiting for these guys. <clears throat> so, anyway, yeah, it's not whatever, we could, <laughs> we could go on about this for hours. Yeah. Um, let's, let's move on to the next point. Uh, 1v1. I, I think this is really interesting. Um, a lot of games and the developers... <clears throat> Blizzard. Um have balanced games around 1v1 because the players bitch about it. And I understand why. Um, when you're fighting someone one-on-one, -on -one, it feels badass. You feel like a fucking badass because you're either going to lose or you're going to win and there's no one to interfere. It's between you and that guy. I get it. I totally get it. However, there is no situations in this game where you're going to be getting into a one-on-one -on -one for more than, say, a minute. Even in World v. World, you're not going to have a lot of one-on-ones. In SPVP, you're not going to have a lot of one-on-ones. It's objective-based so that you don't have a lot of one-on-ones. It's meant to be groups. There's combo fields. There's all sorts of stuff, which we'll touch on in a couple minutes, that make it so that you should fight with your friends. So the fact that ArenaNet is hearing all this feedback, because in the beta, in the first beta, um, there was a lot of bitching and moaning about, you know... Um, this class feels underpowered, this class feels overpowered, this class is too strong, blah, 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 blah. And ArenaNet went and made some tweaks, but ArenaNet didn't tweak anything in terms of, well, now you can go one-on-one -on -one each other. Everybody was like, we need duels. And they were like, um, no, we're not adding duels because that's not how our philosophy works. We want to fight groups of eight versus groups of eight or groups of 300 versus groups of 300. And you're going to do that. And to me, that is, that is a brilliant, brilliant move on their end. Because for the first time, ArenaNet is saying, fuck you. <laughs> we know <laughs> what we want our game to be about. We've been working on it for years. And just because you fucking pussy wow bitches came into our game and decided, hey, we want it this way because this is how we've been playing it for the last eight years, they didn't listen. And that's awesome. And don't get me wrong, I like WoW, I like Blizzard and all that shit, but, you know, for story's sake, you get what I'm saying. Yes. So, I mean, what do you guys, what do you guys feel about no 1v1? I mean, do you, did you guys, do you guys miss it? I like, I like that there's no 1v1. Really like that. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 don't the, I think Bruce is going to say something. Go yeah, ahead, I, I miss the bragging rights of 1v1, though. I, I did, you know, I did enjoy it as a personal thing, but I wasn't all about the 1v1. But you know what? I did like to hang out outside of Ogre Bar and be like, yeah, I'm the fucking man. Um, I, but you know what? I can just prove it structured instead. So it's not a big deal. Mm. I mean, but you still yeah, get you still get just... these epic moments where you're fighting guys and you're running around. Oh, yeah. And, oh, but yeah. then your teammate, it, it literally forces you, if you don't take this guy down in X amount of seconds you are most likely going to run into another one of your teammates and they're going to help out. And that's cool. Or you're going to run into one of their teammates and you're going to get you're going to raffle stomped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny, but anyway. Yeah, the, 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 the yeah. idea that no, no one class can sort of dominate that 1v1 
section and there's no there's no matchup where I'm going to have a statistical advantage because mm -hmm. I'm X class and you're Y class is great. It's purely down to player skill. If my build is better, if I Ooh. understand my class better, if I'm using my combos better, yeah. I'm going to beat you. That's just how it's going to work. And you're going to be like, oh my god, oh my class is under power. Like, no, I was just better than you were. You know, so yep. purely comes, it takes away that element of this class, this the rock, paper, scissors sort of thing. It's just, if you are better than them, you will beat them. Well, and then... Very good point. Very good point. Yes, and then agreed. also, you know, think about it, it's like, you know, um, for the people that are, are still really stuck on, I really want my 1v1, I want my duels, go into an empty SPVP server and fight your friends. It's a great way they to be honest. It's a, yeah, and it's a great way to learn, you know, what the other guy's skills look like, how to defend against them, you know, and that's cool. Um, yeah. And do I think that dueling shouldn't be in? Uh, you know, give or take. I think if dueling is in, maybe it should only be in the mists to the corner. In the somewhere, mist, yeah. So that it's not outside of a main town or in yeah. the middle of PvE and you're like, you know, you're battling this giant fucking shadow behemoth and all of a sudden some dude's like, I want to duel you, flag in the ground. Excuse me? Uh, big monster. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> we should be hugging, like you know? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I think maybe having like a portal to another um, island or whatever in the mist and just have it be like a mm. dueling ground would be a good idea because that's yeah. sort of the place where everybody tinkers. Like when you first get in there, it's kind of overwhelming to some people who've never played the game because you get all your skills, you get mm -hmm. a ton of PvP gear, you're all geared out, and you're basically ready to go. You just got to figure out what you want to trade in and what utility skills you kind of want to roll with. So I think it'd be a good idea maybe just there. But I definitely agree with everyone else that I don't want to mm. see people dueling outside of towns and stuff. I want to look at the town. It's beautiful. You know, I don't want to no, see all that nice. junk. I don't want people popping flags on me all the time, which is what used it, to happen. But in it that also other changes game. the it also changes the way that people talk in in chat and in general speak. The whole atmosphere changes when you walked outside of Ogremar or or um, Iron Forge and Wow. What what did you hear first? Fuck you. That shit's overpowered. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, you got, you're gonna be nerfed. God damn! Do it again and don't fight with that skill. Don't fucking fight with that skill. They needed. <laughs> it's in they the game. I'm gonna fight with the skill. Just for outside of uh, just for outside of Ogre, they needed like a doorstep of Ogre Mar channel or whatever for that shit. Cause that would go on <laughs> all the time. It drove yeah, it drove yeah. me it drove me bad shit because I, it's like number one that's one of my biggest pet peeves. If a skill is in the game, and you're gonna tell me I can't use that skill. Really? That's like, you yeah, know... Yeah, that's stupid. I want to make a baby, but don't use your penis. What? <laughs> <laughs> is, this one, is this one we should bring up the Mesmer pistol glitch in the uh, last beta? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, at, okay, so actually, but that's a really good example. So last beta, um, last two betas, actually, that I play Mesmer, and one of the uh, talents in, um, is that what they're called, talents? No, they're called traits, sorry. One of the traits, Skills. If, you, if you traded into this skill... Um, well, traits, yeah. No, if you traded into this, um, it made your illusions um, have a 20% cooldown on firing. Um, unfortunately, it actually gave them a 90% cooldown. And so uh, you could get this pistol-wielding duelist that did a lot of damage already, but in retrospect, it was perfect. However, if it just kept shooting, you were dead in about... Two seconds. Um, what That's was what, what was really funny about that was that the next beta weekend, the next beta weekend, all you saw were mesmers, and everybody was using it. And it was like, really, you yeah. switched your character because there's a broken skill? Which Arena Net already has said they're gonna fix. That's that's what bothers me. And so. It's important, I think, that you know, in order for people to not do that, ArenaNet's going to have to stay on their game, and they're going to have to be on top of this shit and hot patching things fast. Because, um, especially with a system where you can make a character, throw them into PvP, be up level to 80, you're going to have people that want the points, and they're going to be like, um, you know what, the warrior is overpowered today, so I'm just going to make a warrior, and it doesn't take any of their time, and then they can roll everybody. So. Yeah, that's that's yeah. one thing that they're gonna have to be really careful of, especially since the, uh, the were... glory system is shared. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Hold on, everybody mute for like five seconds. 
Sorry. Ugh. This stupid Ubu. Okay. Better? Yeah. Or not, but whatever. Alright. Ah, oh, jeez. Anyways, so, especially since the glory system is shared between all of your characters, that's the, uh, the point system that you get for playing in all of these P matches. You can spend the points on treasure chests that drop these random loots and bonuses and stuff of that sort. And, uh, you get titles as goes on that should hopefully be implemented at some point. They've mentioned it, but I don't think they've confirmed it. Uh, someone else could correct me on this one. I think it's one of those up-in-the-air systems of the ranking system. But uh, it's shared between all your characters, so even if you erase a character and make a new one, you're still going to have that for your whole account. So it, it's going to be a very mm. touchy-feely line when you have, you know, ten of the same class in a game all the time. Yeah, and it, yeah. It, you could. I mean, I, I'm really... Uh, one thing that our guild is going to do next beta weekend is we are all going to roll Mesmers... And we are all going to invade uh, <laughs> World v. World because we just want to see a million clones everywhere. Uh, that's going to be one of our little fun events. But, you know, but I'm very interested to seeing um, during SPVP what happens when you have, let's say, a group of all warriors or a group of all engineers. What's that going to be like to fight? I'm, I'm really interested in that. So. I never even thought of a group of all engineers. Can you imagine how many turrets that would be? Turrets everywhere. Oh, yeah. Turrets and care packages everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Oh, my God. God. That would be um, so good. I feel like it would be a very long oh, match. You have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, back on the topic of um, uh, talking about class balance and I mean, need, need, need to be on the ball with that class balance, For, based on my experience with Kibbles 1, they were really good with that. They were really on top because you could do the same thing in Guild Wars One, where you could just go, "I'm going to make a PvP character." You're immediately max level with all the gear, and you could just jump straight into structured PvP matches. And they were really good with, "Okay, this is this combination is really broken, or this interaction doesn't work very well, or whatever the case is." They would see that problem and very quickly be on top of that and fix it. So yeah. I have a lot of faith in their ability to fix those problems quickly so that you don't have this like, oh, that skill's broken, let's all make this character. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, on a side note, not to get too far off tangent, but they've also talked about it and we've experienced, uh, it's not like other games, there's not really any downtime when they patch. They have a system where they can actually patch it and it's a simple restart. We've experienced it in beta. It's 30 seconds to a minute. The servers go right back up. So it's not like we're waiting all day for new patch notes and things to go up. If they see something yeah. that's seriously wrong, they can literally fix it and restart the servers and then you're back in in like two minutes at the most, which is awesome. So yeah. They should yeah. be able to stay right on top of things, which would be great. That's actually an yeah, interesting that point, Damien. patching is going to really make it. Damien, from like... From your from your from your opinion, um, you know you played Guild Wars One a lot. Um, yeah. What do you what do you think of the of the SPVP maps? And also, uh, why don't we include the new one that they just announced for the beta weekend? What What are your yeah, opinions on fires. those? Uh, yeah, I really like the the, the SPVP maps. Um, the, the, the concept of sort of I guess capture and control um, style. Um, Matchups is really interesting to me. Like I've played a lot of, I mean, I played a lot of CSS and stuff back in the day, and I always hated those sort of just, just go out and kill everybody, and that's your objective. I like it when I actually have a job or a goal. And you think of like Warsun Gulch and Arasi Basin from 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 World of Warcraft, uh, even Wintergrass to an extent. Um, in that sort of, you've got an objective beyond just go kill that guy, just go do it. You know, so. I really like having that meta that you have to think about of, yeah, sure, I can do a lot of damage, but I can't take points because I go take the point and then one guy turns up and just crushes me because I have no way to defend myself. All I can do is spike people for huge amounts of damage. So you have to think about the way that map plays. And when you think about you've got Battle, Battle for Kylo and um, for the Forest of Niflheim at the moment, which uh, are different types of maps. You've got the beasts in uh, in, in forest and and the trebuchets on um, on the Kylo map. Trebuchet. Which if you control those, the trebuchets destroy environments. They can destroy the other trebuchets. If you destroy one, 
the team gets a repair kit and they can send someone out to go and fix the trebuchet. So those things become really important to control as secondary objectives, as well as the, oh, we've got these three points we need to hold, but hang on, that guy's shelling me from over there with the trebuchet from way across the other side of the map. Maybe we need to send somebody out to go sort that dude out, because otherwise he's going to cause us serious problems. You know, so having those secondary objectives it really adds that sort of that twist element to those maps. Uh, and we don't really know a lot about the uh, the next map type. The um, what's it called? What's it called? The faux fire map. Yeah. Faux fire map. It might be conquest yeah. as far as we know. I don't know if it's a new mode yeah, at all, le but legacy of faux fire. Which I mean, it, it is. It looks like it's going though. back to. Yeah, okay. which they, I think they need to be. Um, but it, it goes back to sort of, I guess, the law in Guild Wars 2, in that the faux fire was um, this, the, the king of the humans, Adelburn, um, unleashed this, he broke his sword and unleashed this giant wave of fire which killed heaps of people, and that's why there's all these ghosts and Ascalon and all that sort of stuff. It's, all, all the law is sort of tied up in that. So going back to this, I, I'm not sure if it's like a going back to a past event, during the faux fire sort of oh, yeah. incident or the searing, which is what they called it. Um, uh, if you've read any of the law or know anything about it, it's called they called it the searing. Um, uh, so I think maybe it's going back to that. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it looks from what I've read, it looks like it's a throwback to some of the sort of quote unquote old school um, uh, Guild Wars One sort of zones and, and, and map styles, which is really cool. I really like that. Well, it's funny because like I learned something today, <clears throat> right? Well, it's funny because because you're you're all like into the lore, and I looked at the uh, the picture of the map, and I was all like, "Ooh, a daytime map!" <laughs> that was like the that was the number one thing I was excited about. I was like, "Ooh, yeah, it's not all foggy or dark. This is sweet." So. <laughs> oh, 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 it's not daytime. It's fiery death. All right. Well, you know, fiery <laughs> death fiery and daytime, death. same thing. Sun is that made works, of fire. Yeah. Yeah, at least, at least it's bright there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> at least you can see properly. <laughs> Glistening yeah. boobies. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know what I would really kill for, though, is a capture the flag mode. Oh, yeah. That'd yeah. be interesting. Definitely. I don't know why. I just have an, I have an, I have an addiction to capture the flag, man. I love it. You have a horrible addiction to capture the flag. I, lo I just love the game type. It's so much fun. There's a lot of skill revolved around it. <laughs> It's a fun game. You protect. Yeah, there's you no, protect, there's no you time run, limit. You defend. You, you attack. And, there's, you, yeah. you have to score to win. You have to win to score. That didn't make any sense. I thought that might have worked, but it didn't. It made me sad. You gotta score to win or win to score. <laughs> and well, knowing knowing our internet too, they'll give you this, the flag as an actual object that you can hit people with, so that'll make it ten times better anyway. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They have all the battle standard <laughs> attacks. Smacking people. Smacking people with flag. <laughs> flag. Oh, man, that'd be so much fun. Environmental yeah, weapon. <laughs> no, seriously, if they had it, if they had a, a bash, a uh, drop on the ground, a uh, sprint ability, um, a defend ability, and uh, maybe a like twirl reflector ability. That, that's that's five right like there. You can easily that's make it. <laughs> If you're yeah, listening you to internet, like, right here, this is what we got. Yeah. See, I just gave you all five abilities for it. Done, just make it mad for you. You've already got the mechanics of the game. <laughs> so I know we talked about making a team of all, you know, one, one profession, but um, is there is there a mix of professions that makes the best team yet? Has somebody come up with the best, the best? Um, uh, makeup yet? The best theory craft at the moment on the current beta weekend. I've heard a lot of people talking about um, ranger and thief being really good together with a trap setup. Um, mm. Thief and mesmer for uh, a lot of AOE stealthing. Um, that's been a pretty popular one, and um, those are really the top two that I know of. Thief is usually like one of the best characters to duo off of because they have so much personal abilities and support abilities and just raw damage abilities that Thief seems yeah. to be like comboing with everyone. And well, what's I'm great really is that, happy to see that, that they're... what's great is that you walked right into my question like perfectly. You didn't say there's eight 
guardian, you need a guardian, you need a mesmer, you need a ranger, you need this, and you need two of these, and you need three, you said, these two work really well together, or these two work really well together, or maybe three of these work really well together. That's what I like. There is no perfect <laughs> makeup. None. Zero. It is about, I want to play this, I can help you with this, I can make a really great defensive build that'll ma match your really great offensive build, that'll mix with your really great support build, that'll really help to team to capture this thing and blah 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 and that's what's mm -hmm. awesome let's go on people <laughs> yeah. there is no rpm at this moment right yeah so well, let's yeah. just throw that out there yeah it could change but i, I mean, have a uh, feeling arena net's yeah. gonna stay on top of that so it doesn't nobody gets there's no ultimate build so yeah there will always be people trying to make that perfect build and all power to them let them and if they find it and they post it on the internet, everyone's going to do it, and guess what? It's going to get nerfed. Well, or I shouldn't say or that. Or it's going it, to get boring. You know. Yeah. Fuck I nerfed. Mean, you it's know, boring. Yeah. That, that was bad uh, terminology on my part. Yeah, it was. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> get out. But you see, oh, you're seeing a lot of um, sort of duo um, or trio sort of matchups where people are getting together and putting together their classes and figuring out what skills interact with each other. Like you've got your um, your class, it sort of leads into the combo stuff a little bit, but like your, your classes that build combos really well and then your classes that finish combos really well. Like the warrior, I think, has, I counted them, the warrior has more finishes with more weapons than any other class in the game. So if you want to finish combos and you want to be that guy, you play a warrior because wow can he finish combos but he can't yeah. set them up he has like two setup abilities so your your deal is okay all my friends are setting up all these crazy combos and i'm leaping in there and i'm throwing my sword around and i'm going crazy and all these combos are going nuts because that's your that's your end of it but if you want to be the guy who's setting up all of that then you play like your necromancers and your elementalists and uh uh, the Mesmer's got a lot of them as well. So uh, there's a really interesting sort of meta there just in the fact that certain classes mm. finish really well and certain classes start really well. So there's a, a there's a lot to go on just on that. Yeah, I know, Tristan. Yeah. I heard what I said. I heard what I said <laughs> after I said it. All right, well, you guys laugh. Uh, that's something we haven't really brought up too much is the combo system. Uh, we yeah. touched upon it a little bit. But, I mean, uh, he was saying, uh, Damien was saying earlier that the Necromancer, the Elementalist, and all that stuff, the Elementalist has, in all of their attunements, they have an ability to put up, at least for the staff, they have a rock wall where if you shoot an arrow through the rock wall, it has extra penetration, I think, or an added bonus <laughs> like that. Um, a fire... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Freak me. I, no, I apologize. That, that was really not planned. Um, the, the flame wall or the flame ring, you shoot an arrow through it and it catches on fire. Um, <laughs> uh, the electricity wall, it adds a, uh, an added damage and possibly a chance of stunning or slowing. So, I mean, that, that's what these combo abilities are. I, I saw from the uh, side of a ranger, if I saw a flame wall, I'm shooting my rapid fire through that because every single arrow I'm shooting through that yeah. wall is getting that burning yes. buff, getting that damage buff. Face. It, yeah, and I mean it, that stuff stacks. It's it's really oh, powerful. Yeah. It's a combo option. It is powerful. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you see a flame wall, a rock wall, a static field, and you shoot all the way through three of them with a rapid fire, you're you're gonna kill people. Well, I mean, people don't the, people don't understand don't people don't understand condition removal and 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 just conditions in general right now people are very used to burst damage what was your what was your build in wow and i hate to keep bringing up wow but guess what we're all programmed because that's what we've played for the last the eight years yeah um yeah. but it was about burst damage and this game is not about burst damage yes burst is helpful if the guy is about to die but because everybody has their own heal because everybody has a way to block damage in some sort of way and everybody yep. has an escape in some sort of way. If you pop all these things and you have this burst damage spec all set up and you miss, you're now useless for the rest of the fight. But the dude that's sitting over in yeah. the corner being like, blink, 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 over and over again with some sort of a condition. Yep. Oh, dude, this guy is now running away because he's like, oh shit, I'm dying. I need to pop my heel. Oh, I pop my heel. 
shit, I'm still bleeding, I'm still dying, and then, like, you know, he runs through a field that someone else made, and it adds more conditions, and it's like, oh, shit, and if his team is not ready to drop down some sort of a condition removal or use some sort of a skill that removes those conditions from him, or he doesn't have one that removes the conditions from him, then he's going to die miserably. Done. And it, he's useless. Yeah. He's, he can't there's, fight, no. and he's just going to freak out. Yeah. There's, so, there's another thing that everybody should understand, too, is that if you have all that burst damage, that's great. You kill somebody, they're not dead, they're downed. So if you've got to go focus on somebody else, you can stay on the, the person on the ground still going to be shooting stuff at you and doing things, so you're still going to be taking damage yeah. from them. So all that burst damage got you absolutely nowhere. You put them on the ground, you got rid of their, maybe their more impressive skills, but they're still going to be putting damage on you and eating away. Meanwhile, yeah. the other guys over there are throwing condition on you, and they're eating away at your house, and before you know it, you're going to go down or you're going to have to try to run for your life. So, I mean, it's not, it's not that easy. You don't just immediately kill people. So that's the other thing you got to understand. Understand. I mean, burst damage isn't really the way to go in Guild Wars. Well, yeah. plus the you know, there's. I mean, a lot there of people... are ways. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, I was say, there are ways that you can make burst damage work, but not in the way you saw in, uh, it, it, like in WoW, for example, like your your fire mage with your combustion procs and you just like crazy spikes of damage and things like that. Which there's no real way to do that. But you can get pretty close, but the trick is you've got to learn to be, I've got to be able to burst, but I've got to be able to sustain my burst because because of those self-heals, because of that down state, because there's going to be other guys around you. So you've got to, you've got to at least pay some attention to, I need to be able to kill that guy, but I need to be able to get out alive at the same time. You need to have a so bat, more of a balance. Yeah, yeah. The glass cannon is really hard to do um, properly. Because you'll, people will just focus you and crush you. So it, it is still a viable spec, though. We don't want to discourage people from no, playing a glass course, cannon no, spec. No, of course not. You There's... just yeah. You just have to realize that if you're in a glass cannon spec, you can't be a solo glass cannon spec. You have to have other people around you that takes the pressure off of you. That uh, you're able to escape without you, you know all of your abilities. You have to you know say a guardian puts up their wall and you stay right behind it so they can't attack you, you're a fantastic glass cannon with some of these support abilities around you. But you know oh, what? Yeah. You, you know, it, it's a, you, you need teammates. You're, you're not going to be able to just, you know... Well, even Arena, you know, Arena that has, has posted in multiple blogs, they've said, in order to be a burst damage class or spec or whatever you want to call it, you have to be a somewhat of a glass cannon. You're going to lose life. You're going to lose condition, uh, you're going to lose boons, you're going to lose all sorts of stuff that will make you stronger. So for those people that are stuck on the idea that, you know, your DPS is, it, it, you can make, a, you can make a, uh, um, a burst class and not, you know, sacrifice something else, they're wrong. Because ArenaNet's stated it, and we've seen it in the PvP videos, on YouTube, on everything. People that go for pure DPS are going to take a hit elsewhere. You can go in the middle ground, and the damage is still significant. So, I mean, it's not like you have to take that much of a hit, but if you want to go super fucking balls-to-the-wall glass cannon, you're going to lose your, your support abilities and your defensive abilities. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you need to... That's, that, that's those cases where you talk, you mentioned before, like you, my hyper-defensive build plus your hyper-offensive build. Okay, cool. Those two can then mesh really well together because I can protect you and keep you alive and interrupt enemies and throw down defensive stuff for you to get and, and that sort of thing while you run around and just crush people with that hyper-damage that you've got going on. So now you've got an enemy team or an enemy duo or an enemy guy who's got to then decide... Do I try and crush the burst guy who can who can't take a lot of hits and ignore the guy who's supporting him and helping him and healing him and doing whatever, or do I ignore the burst guy and just try and survive through his damage and take out the guy who's helping him out, and then I can turn on the burst guy? So you've got this with those duo combos. You're going to have to be really smart about who who can I take out? Who's going to be the most effective person for me to remove in order to make this situation better for me or my team? Yeah, I mean, we've already seen, I've already seen some PvP videos to get really, like, we're getting really nitty-gritty here, but, like, since we're here, we might, I'm just going to bring this up. I already saw videos where 
um, you know, a guardian was a defensive build guardian. And if anybody has played the game and has fought a defensive build guardian, you know that it takes forever. And you're probably going to die one on one. And it's not going to be quick. The dude's just going to stand on the, the point and be like, blip, 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 blip. He's just going to hit you for a little bit and you're going to be like, I healed through it. Blip, blip. And you're, you know, whatever. It's just going to take forever. Now, anyway, I saw this video where literally the team took out every guy except for the Guardian. The Guardian is the last person standing on the point. And all of a sudden you see, because they must have been on like Ventrilo or something, you see all of them turn. Their avatars just go, whoo. <laughs> And this guardian is just standing right in the middle. And everything just hits this fucker. And he's boom on the ground. That's how, that's how things are going to work. I mean, you know, people are going to start to recognize, okay, he's popping this skill. He's popping that skill. He's probably specced into this. So we should probably adjust our tactics, which is great. The teamwork in this game, I think, is, is something that shouldn't be overlooked. And, and you shouldn't be like, well, I want to play a gas glass cannon. I want to do uh, defensive. I want to do support. Do whatever you want, but I highly recommend you find some friends to play with. Um, it's you know, you don't have to, but there's so many cool things that you can find by having some buddies that you know. You go, hey, drop a fire field real quick, and boom, you shoot some arrows through it, and this guy's burning. You know, and then the guardian's like, oh shit, I get extra damage when a dude's burning, and he's up front hitting the guy, and so it's like, fuck, that just helped me, and that can also happen you know randomly which is great too so you don't have to be in a party but if you're going to join a party i would highly recommend you join alttabme.com at arcanix and our guild because it's just so awesome but we only have two slots left so you better make your application count Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, you're you're plug out here. uh let's talk about He's let's good now. let's pull back let's pull back for a second let's talk about um, rewards. What are the rewards for PvP? I mean, you get boosted well, up to level 80, you can jump in with any character you want, so what the fuck is the point? Cosmetic well, I rewards. A, yes, I already touched a bit, a little bit on the, uh, the glory, uh, reward system. It's like mm -hmm. a point system, just like, a, you know, a, uh, you get so many points for a win, you get so many points for capturing this many objectives, and that's cumulative across your account. You get a uh, a ranking system on that end that goes up to 80, I believe, and you get uh, small titles. I think it's like rabbit at level three, and you get like duck at level four or something like that. You know, you're you're small, whatever. I haven't seen the full list, so I don't know. You'll probably end up like gladiator or super awesome warrior at level 80. But it's nice to see that progression to know how long you've been playing compared to other people. But you can also spend that glory just like as if it was karma or gold. But you don't. You buy specific items that you want that are cosmetic, or you can also uh, the, for the jew the jewels, the runes, the all the stat buffing for your armor, because everything's normalized. You don't have the advantage of oh my god, I played 50,000 games. I'm going to be wrecking everyone that's only played under 30,000 games. I mean, you you all the stats are normalized and it's definitely skill based, but this allows you to tweak your stuff. Uh, according to uh, how you want to play and you're given a starter set and everything but you can adjust it uh, the more you play but you can also buy these random chests that depending on what rank you are you can buy these chests it's a separate ranking system and it's you need only to have up glory to level points to 10, buy them too correct yeah and you get these uh, you get chances of these super awesome looking gear which you then socket with the jewels the jewels and the runes and the sigils and you that's how you get your primary look in PvP. Also yep. if you see someone with a starter base, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, they might be new to the game, okay, I I'll take my chances, they may be super awesome and try to fool you. But if you see this guy with these large shining armors and massive swords and rainbow shooting bows and Run. whatever oh. um, <laughs> That's where you go, Oh shit. <laughs> chances are he's been playing a long time and you're gonna wanna spin around. Yeah, you're gonna want to adjust your play accordingly. So or is it it's another farmer. one of those things. You're not. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, but you're gonna want to play accordingly. It's just like in you know, wow. When oh my god, okay, that guy's got season ten. Oh my god, that guy's got season thirteen. He's gonna wreck me no matter what. Now it's okay. That guy has le first park gear. This guy has super elite gear. I'm gonna have to be careful 
but he may still suck. I mean, yeah. he may just have yeah. played a lot. I mean, it's it's it you you know this there's he's not going to have some massive stat boost against you. He's going to have experience against you, and that's what you should be looking out for. The people that have been around and know the system, and the best thing you can do is hey, you know what? Go fight that guy. You might learn something new. But you're going to want to go into it knowing, uh, t take your chances lightly. Uh, be careful. <laughs> you in a bar fight would be yeah, really that's... funny, I think. Like, if, if, you were, if you got into a bar fight, I feel like you would go up to the dude and be like, your arms are kind of big, so I figure you work out. But I just want to make sure, do you lift <laughs> 20 pounds or 30 pounds, and how many reps do you do? Do you do lean or do you do bulk? Because if it's bulk, maybe I could dodge out of the way. But if it's lean, I don't know if I could take you because you might be a little too much agility for me. Um, <laughs> would you mind if I just I bought you a beer and then we don't have to fight and we can just talk about it? And then if you get really drunk and forget about this, maybe we can fight after that. But at least I'll know then. <laughs> I am incredibly analytical in every single scenario I am in. And apparently that's come off in all of my speeches and talks in the past. And um, I'm not going to lie. I've actually had a very similar occurrence to that, so kudos to pointing that out. <laughs> I, I, I did have a guy come up to me, and like apparently I was talking to his girl or something, and I, I just shoot the shit when I'm at the bar. But I did have a guy come up to me, like, hey, what's what's up? It's like, hold on, hold on. And I'm, I'm kind of checking him out, and it's like... Hey, yeah, hey you know, is that why he came up to you? He was like, yo, what's up? You were checking him out? <laughs> you shouldn't do that when you're with your girlfriend. Ball. <laughs> Look at the other girls, but, then your girlfriend hits you, and not a big burly dude, okay? But, well, I mean, when I'm at the bar, I'm always talking with people. I'm sorry, we're really transgressing. Yeah, let's just, TV. okay, hold yeah, on, let's just, moment. yeah, you know what, right. yeah. Sorry. Zach, let's go ahead. There, let's backtrack. John, John, go, go ahead, ahead and, and talk about what you wanted to talk about. I think you were, you were on uh, the topic. Nothing, I just, no, I just wanted to uh, make sure everybody remember that it's really important not to get discouraged that even when, obviously, as Bruce said, when you see someone in that gear, they have experience on you. They will never have any sort of stats over you. Right. So it's not going to come down to that. And so, like he said, you could probably learn something from them by fighting them. Maybe you'll get your ass kicked because the guy knows the maps and he knows what he's doing or whatever. Or maybe you'll kill him. I mean, that's it. That's the way it goes. It's all for it's all skill, basically, and your teammates. I mean, that's a very important thing. What's going whoa, on? <laughs> whoa! Whoa! I didn't put it on Is Do Not Disturb. You? My bad. Hold on. <laughs> We're good now. Apparently, my oh, grandma good. was calling. My grandma. <laughs> Doesn't she know we're doing a podcast? What the Do hell, grandma? grandma? If, if my if my grandma had a webcam, I would have totally put her on the stream. Just saying. <laughs> but she doesn't, and nobody will understand. So, um, oh, that's cute. That, that is cute. Yeah. Just don't tell my grandma that I ignored her because I, I was on a it. podcast. She'll be like, "What's a podcast?" <laughs> The armor you get for PvP and glory stuff, it, it is all aesthetic, and you can collect all the sets. And the really cool part is that this is a count bound. So if you get a really cool hammer or a really yeah. cool um, sword, great sword or something on a uh, on a um, elementalist per se, and you can't use that. Uh, and then you make a guardian, you can go into your PvP bank, which is specific to PvP. And you can grab that out and hook it up. So you have some really cool stuff. So you get rewards for playing mm -hmm. on any character in PvP for any of your characters. And that's really neat. And also... And I love that. Yeah, they were talking yeah, about the fact that you can put some of those into the... Um, what is it? The Forge? The something Forge? The Mystic yes. Forge. The yeah. Mystic in Lion's Forge. Forge in Lion's Arch. Oh. And you can um, get weapons that you would want. So let's say you got two hammers... And you're like, damn, I need to trash this thing because it's useless. Nope. You can go to the Mystic Forge, put it in there, and get what you want. So, very cool. Very cool. That's it. And for all of you uh, perfectionists and uh, completionists out there, there are a lot. Let me tell you this right now. It oh, will yeah. take you forever to complete this collection. It is yes. huge. Oh, God. Massive. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, if you're in the beta weekend this weekend and you have a chance to get into structured PvP, go to the Mist, check out your bank, and um, start scrolling, and then talk to me on Sunday when you're done. 
because there's just like <laughs> pages of of stuff there that you can look at or whatever. I mean, so much stuff to unlock. So a lot of different looks that uh, you find the best one you want to run around in and look bad oh, yeah. at. So yeah, yeah. it's a uh, it's a pretty boy's dream. Mm-hmm. So butterflies. Oh, shut up! I like my butterflies. <laughs> Um, oh, something that I think is really cool, um, and I think a lot of people when they spec into their their, um, uh, their when they spec their characters. So when you go to the when you go to the mist, your character has everything reset, and you can spec into anything you want because you're boosted up to level eighty. One of the cool parts of that <clears throat> is that you can just start specking. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that. They give you a weapon set when you first get there. Nine times out of ten, that weapon set is not the weapon set you're going to want to use. Go check out the, the vendor and see what weapons you know, your character can use. Look at, the, look at your skills. See what, what benefits from those skills. Switch out those weapons because <clears throat> even though you only have five skills, every time you switch weapons, you get another five skills depending on the weapon. Um, and a lot of people seem to overlook that. And I don't know why... I, I did in the beginning too, so it's just it's just something that you just don't think about. Um, but think about both weapons as being viable and how you're going to use them together. So, like, if I'm playing a mesmer and I want to do conditions, but I also want to do uh, some damage, I would probably pick uh, a staff on one hand, and then on the other on the other uh, weapon selection, I would do a sword and a torch, or whatever, a sword and a pistol, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to use those skills to do different things, and it just gives you so many different options. It's, it literally doubles your skills or, or your traits that you would pick because of the amount of you know, uh, combinations you can use by just weapon swapping. Um, and for elementalists and mm-hmm. engineers, I, I'm not very familiar with that. Zach has played as an engineer, so I'll, maybe he knows a little more like how it, how it affects it. Uh, yeah, elementalists and engineers is more based on, well, elementalists have their attunements they can switch to. Engineers, we have our tool belt, so uh, we have um, toolkits that we can use. It's more based into our um, our utility skills, so that's where all our tool belt things are and everything. And that's what we use to swap in and out. I mean, we get different skills if I put on whatever the, the tool belt or if I pull out my flamethrower. A lot of flames. You get a, a whole different uh, weapon skill set. You get five different weapons for the flamethrower or, or um, grenade kits or whatever like that. So that is totally different. It's based on you know your traits and what you want to put towards you know certain trait lines. If you want to buff your toolkits and everything like that, um, it's not really weaponry as much as the other classes. Which that'll be a key thing for you is how you what weapons you want to use and then figuring out your traits. Engineer, it's more of like. Uh, what toolkits do I want to use? And then you figure out like exactly what kind of what traits you want, etc. As you go through and uh, um, allot your points in your trait system. Well, the, the engineer has the that cool niche. With, yeah, well, the engineer has that cool niche where they only have the rifle, two pistols, and a shield. So they don't have that many Pistol main. Shield, yeah. Right, they only have those weapons to use. But the elementalists, they have the staff, the dagger, they have a sword, torch, all this other stuff. And they have, I think they have the most abilities of any class. Possibly the warrior has more. But I'm pretty sure the elementalist has um, all more abilities because every weapon they have, the staff, staff doesn't have just five abilities. The staff actually has 20 abilities because they have the four attunements with it. They go fire, air, water, and earth. So you're not only have that five staff abilities. By your powers (laughs) combined. (laughs) Heart spotted. Sorry. (laughs) Where's my monkey? Um, no, it's fine. Uh, so you don't only have those five staff abilities. You have 20 staff abilities because you have to change between oh. those four attunements. And they have a different cooldown system, and it's changing every other beta to final niche. It's like a, it takes 20 seconds before you can go back to your previous attunement, but you can still change any other attunement every 10 seconds and 15 seconds. And they're, they're changing the fine-tuning on it. But you're only using that one weapon, but unlike all the other classes where they have the two weapon sets of five skills, you have one weapon set, but four sets of five skills. So you have 20 abilities versus everyone else's 10 abilities. It's a, a huge metagame on the elementalist part. You know, staff yeah. for AoE. Make sure AOE, you are stuff. a Korean. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, comment 
right. denied. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's there's a lot of meta gaming to the elementalist, and you'll see very situational for some things. And even when you're out of combat, you can go. If say you see uh, you're fighting against three people and you come out of it alive, you see one person coming at you and you're still out of combat, switch to your dagger dagger and you'll have better one-on-one -on -one capabilities. So there's a there's even larger meta game to the elementalist than any other class because if you're out of combat, you can still change weapons. You're not locked on that weapon for say the next hour or something. So just uh, something to keep in mind for these uh, non-weapon switching classes. You have a lot of scenarios and uh, things you can do with it. Did he cover what you were going to say, Damien? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of flexibility. Um, yeah, mostly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the elementalist is good to... Um, they're, they're hard to learn. <laughs> I spent a lot of time playing one. And they... Um, yeah, they are. They're, yeah, really, they're, they're very they're different. Learning that... Yeah, learning that switching between the instruments, when to switch, what to switch to... It's one of the things I love is that all the classes feel very active, and not as opposed to reactive. So it, you know, the elementals goes, "Oh, okay, there's a lot of guys over there. I'm going to switch to my fire thing, and I'm going to rain down fiery hell on upon all these guys, and then I'm going to switch to my water thing and support my friends and chill those guys, and change to air and stun that dude, and give my friends a speed buff, and then I'm going to switch back." To fire and cause more fiery death and you just keep going and going and going and it's so much fun it's so good it's such a good class yeah <sighs> yeah um i want to still uh, my number three in about five to ten minutes just so everybody in the stream knows i want to open it up to a q a in about five to ten minutes so if you have any questions start thinking about them um type them out our moderators will collect them and pass them on to us uh, but i just want to have them ready to go in about five to ten minutes when we're ready to do that um, the metagame. Has the metagame emerged yet? It's out there. But it's, starting it's all subject to change. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, yeah. Oh, geez. Oh, I mean, I, I can go into the metagame way more than some of the other guys. I think uh, Damien up there knows quite a bit about the metagame right now. Uh, we, we, we're some of the top people that really go deep into the talent, the, the trait trees, the skill abilities, the weapon sets, and we think of how how would I build this class for this scenario, and we will literally sit on these classes for an hour, two hours, five hours at a time, and read, and research, and play with, and uh, gear set, and I mean, right now, yeah. I haven't had enough time to make a final list of what's awesome, because there's so much, but uh, you'll, you'll see, like, the thief right now has some of the better support damage abilities. You'll see the guardians on more a uh, defensive build. You'll see uh, the elementalist and the necro are really good for AOE uh, in certain specs and builds. Uh, but I mean, for a downright, this is what you do. This is when you have to do it. It's it's so much, so many moving parts, so many variables. There's no final for the end game right now. Not even close. At least I haven't found it. Yeah. I mean, you got to consider that, like, you, you've got all these different... You, what, you've got, you got eight professions, and in those eight professions, there's probably, what, a dozen, two dozen different builds for each of those eight yeah. professions. And then you combine them with the other guys on your team in SPVP, and suddenly you've got millions of combinations... Of, of, of skills and interactions and, and, and there's never going to be that particular thing is better than this thing <clears throat> in every situation because it's just not going to happen well, it's not going to be the way you, it works so what do you think about, work that way what do you think about the idea that the maps are so different sometimes that um, sometimes you feel as though you should spec one way for say the clock tower and spec another way for uh, the outdoor one for the you know well uh, that's that's possible. I mean, especially when you have the scenario of you have the PVE element in the uh, Forest and Niflhel, uh, and then you have the Trebuchet ability in the uh, the Battle of Kylos. Kylo. You you have yeah. you, you have these uh, scenarios that you may benefit more if, say, you were a you know just throwing this out there. If you were like a great sword versus a sword dagger or whatever. 
you know, you may have a smaller niche advantage in this map or the other, but for the most part, it's not uh, it's not going to be so substantial that you're going to have to do it. There's nothing that you'll have to spec for for this map. It's you'll be able to adjust, you'll be able to compromise maybe a little bit, but you'll they'll never feel you'll never feel locked into having to play a certain way for a certain map for a certain scenario. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to still be viable. You may not be super amazing, awesome, 100% of the time, but you can't play that way in Guild Wars 2. It's just it, it, mm. you'll kill yourself trying to. Do you think? But do you, and, and, but do you that think... tweaking might just be a case of uh, yeah, the, the tweaking might just be a case of I switch out one utility skill or two utility skills to something slightly different so that in that in that particular map I can move faster. See, yeah. See that you, know, see, you just yeah, answered you just answered my question. Faster. You can you can hot swap your traits. Yeah. You can hot swap your skills. That, that's the yeah, answer to the of, question. You're yeah. out of combat, change your skills. As long as you're out of combat. It. And yeah. and uh, that's yeah. the thing, you might you might have to. I mean I, I like I, I mentioned in previous podcasts when we were doing P V E in the dungeon, I was at the beginning for the first 20 minutes. I was just swapping out utility skills, finding out exactly what worked with the group we had, the way we were playing the dungeon. And the same thing's going to come to play with SPVP and stuff. Okay, I just got mm -hmm. our whole team just got rolled by on this objective. What can I change in my utilities to help our guys hold that objective next time we go after it or whatever? So I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're going to have to switch to a specific one, but you might want to try out different things and see what works better. I mean, there 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 won't be a specific thing on a certain map that you're going to need this utility skill for, but it might you mm -hmm. might find out that it works on this map a lot better than it work on the other map, and you might want to use it throughout the whole round and just you know use it for that match. So as long as you're out of combat, you can switch them up and do whatever the heck you want to do with them. Yeah, and that so, that that yeah, really it's a lot, answers a lot my of question. Because I I'm thinking here and I'm sitting and I'm going, yeah. fuck, every map is going to be really different and you know what if you made a spec for you know sitting in a window of a clock tower and then you're stuck in the open world on the next one you know what i mean so that's cool that you can hot swap it yeah um awesome. and you'll have interactions between oh so oh, yeah uh, i was gonna say yeah you got if you go in like as a full pre-made group into a structured pvp match you might set up a certain build to interact really well with your other teammates so that you've got a lot of combinations, you've got a lot of ways to interact with each other and help each other out. That's cool. But in your in your sort of if you go into like say like a pug match, I guess, you might need to on that's where you're gonna really need on the fly to okay, they're doing this kind of thing, so I'm gonna change the way I work to better fit with my team so that we can then win. They're fighting in the middle. Uh um, shit. <laughs> yeah, let, let me <laughs> Let me, let me bring this up real quick, too, that I didn't touch upon earlier. There's a few different game modes of how you can get into these structured PvP games. There's a hot joinable that you'll remember from, like, a Call of Duty game or a first-person shooter. You jump into a game, you're with 15 other people automatically, and you're pugging around, and you're doing what you're doing. There's also a tournament-based system for all these maps and all these uh, games that you go into these games preset as a squad or a team or however you want to put it that you set up with your friends or your arena buddies and you're in this uh, single elimination against eight, seven other teams so you have a three round single elimination if you get into the top tier if you are in first place you get uh, some bonuses to your glory you get uh, I think a treasure chest and you get points that allows you access into the monthly tournaments the general tournament play, you can do it any time with whatever team you want, but with that team, you can get into the monthly tournaments, and if you do really well in the monthly tournaments, you can get into the annual tournaments, and that stuff, I believe, can actually uh, bring you some, you know, uh, for you people that really want that gladiator, you really want that eSport, oh yeah, hardcore, I mean, this is for you, this is what you want, you want to get into these yearly tournaments, because uh, I believe in the end, I think even in Guild Wars 1, they did cash tournaments at one point. Uh, someone else correct me? Did I read that correctly? Uh, that they did? I, I do don't. I don't remember if they did, but there was a there was certainly a lot of. Um, I don't remember if there was cash tournaments, but there was certainly a lot of rewards for uh, for completing those. Like I mean, you could go to the um, the Isle of Balthazar in in, uh, in Guild Wars 1, which is essentially the mists in in Guild Wars 2, uh, and there were these sort of plinths with these trophies on them, 
and it was like, you know, 2010 championship team name. Like, bam, it's there. It's in the game forever. You that's, won in 2010. Yeah. That's you want to show team. Yearly tournaments are for oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start recruiting at some point. Me and some of my real life buddies, we're all about that. I uh, will be recruiting at some point, not in the beta, probably about two months into the game after we're all settled. But that's, that's something I do want to get into. We talk about enjoying the game and I love playing the game with guildies, but sometimes I love getting that we want to win and we want to wreck other people and that I, I respect other people that do, but again, you know, we're all about fun here. But me personally, sometimes I really love killing people and just dominating. So Disclaimer, yeah. if you play on the team with Bruce, he's most likely going to get distracted by his pig called Wiggly Boop and will lose for your team. <laughs> no, I, I do already have my pet set out for a might buff cat attack beast and a bear support chilling effect. So there will be no pig play in tournament play. Aww. Aww. In tournament. I have a couple questions from the uh, forums because we answer those first. If you go to alttabme.com and you ask questions for our next podcast, we will always post what the, uh, what the next podcast um, uh, topic will be on. And if you post topic. questions in the thread, we will answer those first. So the first question is, and this is perfect interlude from segue sorry from uh competitive and money making being an ex wow arena veteran i'm really hoping arena net can nail the correct formula for producing a great and viable esport which will hopefully see lots of competitive streams and events for in the near future what do you guys think about the current dynamicness of the in-game tournaments with the free to enter pay to enter and monthly setups and do you think they'll offer enough intimate completion competition perhaps comparable to a 2v2 3v3 arena without causing a living balance nightmare for the game developers so the first question is uh what do you guys think about the current dynamic of the in-game tournaments with the free to enter pay to enter and monthly setups yeah i think they're fucking i'm I loving think, it i think it's great yeah that basically yeah. sums it yeah, up yeah. really good yeah um, we did, right yeah. now Right now, for the hot joinable, I think it's pretty much locked at an eight per eight v eight, uh, sixteen person match. I believe the tournament plays are five v five, and it's always objective yes. based. It's not in arena. It's not a capture the flag. It's the it's the same two maps that we've had conquest. with three points of capturing. Yes, it's the conquest maps. You do have to remember that these are conquest maps and not an arena. You you, I really want to make that point clear. This is not a kill the other team mm -hmm. and you win. It is objective-based and you have to coordinate with your team more so than a RPM, you poly that guy, I stunlock that guy, we focus that guy. You know, you're going to have to adjust <gasps> and coordinate and... Set a flashback, <laughs> oh. Sorry. Oh, God. Uh, I, right? Oh. right? Every, yeah. Everyone played an RPM. Um, I got a, I got so a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh god, you can just tell I led a arena team, right? Anyways, um, <laughs> but uh, for the monthly tournaments, I really like the system of how you ha it's not just you have to play so many matches, you have to with get within a certain tier, you have to win so many matches, you have to prove your worth in the monthly, in the, in the, uh, the buy-in, whatever, uh, hot join tournaments to get into the monthly tournaments and then when you get into a certain bracket of the monthly tournament you get into the yearly this isn't a oh we hit 2500 i don't have to do anything for the rest of the season see ya oh well, yeah that it's, sucked you know, you, man, you're reminding me of all the things i hated about arena yeah. fuck bad memories well, that's Ugh. what i'm saying this, that's Ugh. that's why i'm loving Ugh. this i mean Ugh. you <laughs> You, right. you can constantly get better. You can constantly adjust. You can constantly improve. You, you ever don't thought of being an army recruiter? Down. Uh, you could totally do that, Tom. No, that, that makes... like, We're going to move no, on. That... Anyway, uh, do you think they'll yeah. offer intimate competition, perhaps comparable to 2v2 or 3v3 without causing a living balance nightmare for the game developers? No. That's my. That's what I think. I think no. I, nope. No. 
No, I really think they're they're staying away from the arena mindset, and I applaud them for that. I mean, it it would be nice to have, but I'm kind of glad they're not doing it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, moving on. Uh, let's take some questions from the live stream. I got it. <laughs> All right, here like we go. Here's our first. Here's our first question. This is a, yeah. fucking DJ Tristan over here, like Pauly D with my hair. What's up? Oh man. Yeah, that's right. I busted out jersey on your face. All right, here we go. A question from Waldemar. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna try to say people's names. It's just gonna fail. Is the PvP gear <laughs> is the PvP gear only available in the PvP zones, and is it also available to morph PvE gear with the looks of PvP gear? Uh, Walmart. What? The PvP <laughs> gear uh, is only available in the PvP zones, meaning SPVP. So that is that's that. And no, you cannot morph it into the PvE gear. They are making sure to keep. PvE and PvP very, very separate. Um, they've even actually yes. talked about certain skills that will have different damage ranges in SPvP versus PvE. Um, just so that uh, yeah. it's very hard to balance a game on PvP and PvE. So sometimes uh, in order to do that, which is a great idea, once again, go Arena, yay, go you. Um, they're making it so that it doesn't have to be the same thing in both places. All right. Next question. When doing a 1v1 in a private map with a group of your friends, how do you set it up? Does it put you in two separate groups so you can only duel the other group, or can you duel anyone that joined the game with you? Answer, Purdy, please. I'm going to do RP PvP. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of hearts well, and shit in there, what... too. I just didn't say them. <laughs> yeah. um, what... This is what we did. This isn't what Arena tells us to do. This is our loophole around the system. We ended up make, going into an empty room, and we did probably like you know anywhere between five, six, seven guildies that were like, oh my god, we want to play one v one. So we went into an empty match. We set up over Mumble. Okay, meet in this location. Okay, one, two, three, go. You have this to be on opposite a... teams. I think what what she's asking is you have to be on yeah, opposite yeah, teams. You to, yeah, you if have you to be open on up the map, you can swap, and and the match will yeah. start with only two people in it, and you have to be on the opposite teams. But there's no like free for all. Yeah. No. So, there's no setup for the duel. You just kind of meet and do it. And right. Duel. This this yeah. was our loophole to the system, and yeah. this is. Uh, Say, try, try it in the next beta if you want to do it. Just you and a friend, join an empty room, yeah. and go at it. There'll, there'll definitely be yeah. empty rooms. They got a ton of servers out there. Shards, Ooh. whatever you want to call them. Which race will look coolest for Ranger? And should I consider playing Ranger or Elementalist? I am stuck. Char. Um, the best thing I could Char. say is... Char. Oh, Char. So very... Char. See, it's it's personal okay. preference, It's really, really funny, really. because I'm, so... I'm human... He's saying Char, fucking he's saying Savari. Char. Nobody's saying Asura because they're little rat people. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, it's all personal preference. Uh, however, it comes down to what you want to... Oh, however, ahead. they get the best racial skill in the game. Okay? Yeah. Now, people who played Guild Wars 1 will remember a little skill called Pain Inverter. Pain Inverter was... Amazing. Now, what the Asura get the skill. They get, it's a racial ability for them. Uh, you, It's like a 60-second cooldown. lasts for 30 seconds. gives you retaliation for 30 seconds. Any damage you suffer is reflected back on your opponent. Oh, my God. Greatest skill ever. I'm pretty sure, though, ArenaNet have been clever and decided that you can't use racial skills in structured PvP. Because something like Pain Inverter, you just go full team of, of Azura and just go, oh, you're attacking us. Everyone use Pain Inverter. And now you're all dead because you killed yourselves with your own abilities. Yeah. 
So I'm pretty sure they won't let you do stuff like that in the, this is the, uh, in the actual structure. The reason right. they're doing this is they're giving the ugliest, stupidest class the most overpowered ability so people will actually play it. I get it. It's cool. <laughs> but, but, but They had it from Guild Wars 1, man. It's in the lore. Oh, yeah. Well, but yeah, the in the lore, have... they're stupid, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, but the Azure also have the uh, Golem ability, too. I mean, the Golem oh, yeah. is so much the fun, too. Golem. Oh, come on. Come on. That's fun. To answer the question, play what you want to play. Don't get your answer from us. Try it, yeah. Do a little bit of research, <laughs> yeah. play with it. You gotta try it. You, yeah, you I have just to want to try it. Yeah, hatred of rat people. Yeah. Yeah, the racial skills, people. even though we all have personal preferences and stuff, your <laughs> class rate, uh, ultimate skills or elite skills that are going to be, are going to be more powerful than racial skills. Racial skills are good, don't get me wrong, some of them look really awesome and viable to use in certain instances, <laughs> but they are, uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they, they balance, Arena specifically balance them so you don't need to pick one race over another to whatever, yeah. get the leg up and SP. So don't worry about that. I know we talk about it, you know, Damien's up there like, this is fucking awesome, and all this crazy shit over there, but wow. don't worry about it. Pick what you want to play, awesome. whatever you like, and then <laughs> just, uh, enjoy the game. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> on that note, human stealth detection in WoW. How, how many people went human stealth in WoW? Uh, human just to have the stealth detection in WoW. I mean, that's yeah. what they'd want. Oh, no, I was cool. dumb, and I yeah. played troll. <laughs> yeah, I played the troll as well. <laughs> Berserker was fun, right? I was like, Ooh, they fixed I'll it, be yeah. taller than everybody else. They'll be intimidated by me. <laughs> and then you're hunched Ooh. over. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, Terrible. I am now the shortest character in the game. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually yeah. pulling There's little no... lice out of the gnome's hair. All right, this is great. Yeah. There, there is there is no statistical advantage for playing any class over any other, which, especially for structured PvP, you need that equalizer. That really the the race is a cosmetic thing, and it's purely about your class and your skill with the class. That's what it's all about. They've stripped it right back to, you're better than that guy. You get to win. Right. That's how it works. Um, next question. What are the differences between PvP and WoW and in Guild Wars 2 aside from the burst th differences? I think we, I think that's like the entire podcast. We, yeah, yeah we, 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 I'd, we, I'd say we really went back to WoW a lot on this one. I'd say like rewind yeah, the podcast did. when we re, we'll, we'll be publishing it to YouTube. Um, just so people know the schedule, it's uh, Mondays we go live with it, Wednesdays we publish it to YouTube. So I would go to the YouTube channel, Tristan NYC. And uh, check it out because it will. Uh, it'll. I think we've covered all that. I don't yeah, think we need to search that again. Yeah. yeah. Any personal experience with playing a thief? How does it feel? Um, I played a thief for a little bit. Thief is else? awesome. I liked it. Thief I, mean, is I think you played the I most, like, Tristan, out of everybody. I played a, I played thief, a shit so. ton of the thief. Um, after playing it, uh, I really liked. I really liked the fact that I almost actually picked the thief. Um, I was afraid to pick it because I didn't want to be like a rogue in um, in World of Warcraft. But when I got I got onto the thief and I could use pistols and bows and shit, I was like, wow, I can actually be far away and doing relatively good damage. And this is really awesome. The animations are really neat. The the gunfire is really neat. The weapons are cool. The armor looks badass. You just look like a badass as a thief. Um, shadow step. Right? Yeah. yeah. You, get, you get shadow steps and all sorts. In of stuff AOE like that. stealth. Yeah, and you and but that's uh, yeah. that's the thing. It was funny Shadow because refuge. like I was kind of like, oh well, it's too much DPS. And then uh, you know the beta ended, and I went and read about it and everything and what other people were doing. And there's a lot of support built for the thief, which are really cool. Um, yeah. So I think the thief is a very balanced class over overall. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of bitching right now about the thief because of X, Y, and Z. But to be honest, I really think that the thief. Once Arena Net's done with it, it's going to be just as fun as the other classes, as long as you enjoy it. And Guy would know you cannot speak. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> the only thing it, right now, the Thief is the last class I care about right now. It is number eight on my chart of one to eight. The only thing that would put it in the top three for me is if they made the steel mechanic. The the they have the steel ability and you get an advantage on your opponent. If they made that a mug kind of ability and you got some 
random generated item from the opponent or from the mob, I would play the thief to shit because I love that steal mechanic. If they had that, thief would be number one on my list. But because it's not, it's number eight, and that makes me sad. That's a weird. It really does. I like the steal that, mechanic. That's a, that's a really strange reason for a seven point difference. Right? Yeah, you know? I like. Yeah. It. He wants his he wants his yeah. pig ability only in on his character basically. He, well, yeah. He, the, this all go back. This all goes back to Wiggly You're obsessed with that pig. You really need to. It, it, well, we need to have a chat later. Well, well <laughs> intervention. Well, no, it goes back to like say, <laughs> it goes back to like right the pickpocket ability goes. for the rogue or the the steal ability in Final Fantasy XI. You play the thief character in an RPG because you want to have that steal ability, that mug ability. You get the the potions, the elixirs. The I I I want that. No, you know why you play a thief <laughs> in Guild Wars 2? Sad Bruce. No, there's, there's a play thief. No, there's a specific reason. <laughs> oh, Leaping Death Blossom. There's a, oh. there's a specific reason why you play a thief in Guild Wars 2. And... Unload. Dual pistol. No. No, <laughs> Unload. It has, it has du nothing. A dual pistol is a very, no. very popular build. No, none of that. None of that. I'm going to show the stream what it is in about two seconds. Just give me a second. Oh. The reason you play a thief in Guild Wars 2 is for the following reasons. Bing, bing. It's really quite easy. Let me just switch something here so they can hear it. It's this outfit. Oh no, here we go, pretty boy. Oh god, oh, look god. at that. Oh yeah, look at that leather jiggle. Oh. Uh. Yes, run over those rooftops. Oh, look at that ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. She looks hot doing it. What did you vote over there? I mean, that is... That yeah. is the reason you play a thief because she has no clothing on. Leather she, pants. Leather pants and slow motion gun firing. Mm, it's so awesome. Mm. Matrix. Oh. oh yeah. Whatever. It goes again. That's that's the reason you play a thief. Um. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I got a little carried away. Still number eight. <laughs> <laughs> Can you group queue with your friends for practice or only in tournament mode? Uh... Right, you can, right now uh, it's only in tournament. Well, you do have the ability to join a friend's hot yeah, join but match. but it's not. It but sucks. But you may, yeah, you you up may on the wrong, not... On the other team, so... Yeah, it's just like if you join in the I FPS or something like that, you're going to get put onto whatever gonna team has the fewest fix members. This. This, is, this is something they're going to fix. Oh. Like, I can't see that going live. They're mm. going to fix that. No, uh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't, don't know. know about that. Well, if because they don't, if they they don't fix it, I think it's a big mistake. So you can join as a group, and I think it's a big mistake because fighting I, I, in a tournament is different than fighting a pug, and a lot of people yeah, don't, don't aren't know, skilled enough to fight in tournaments. I know, I know. but you don't want but eight people going into a game and pre, -made, pre -made. You, you don't want to run into the pre-made yeah. system that you had in the WoW. Yeah. You don't want to go into in a, a pre-made 10 against a bunch of pugs and then they'd steamroll you. But I, I mean, wish there was a way like the <clears> they could look honor. at your rank or something then and, and split it up versus via your rank. So, so, so then you have a WoW ranking system? I mean, that's not what the hot joint is about. The hot joint is about making Just people play game. with other people and making it's it like a quick match in a you should still yeah. at least you should still at mm. least be able to join with at least three people. That's what I'm saying. Is that well? I, that's I, not I, going I, to ruin I would like a game. The ability to be like, I, I hit or miss. You you can't have three yeah. people that do dominate a match. You can't deny that. There's, there's a there's a thin line that comes across that, and I agree because it's a team based game, and I understand it. We always find it really annoying when we're doing that. It is, it's super we're annoying. We end up on the other team, but. You have to think, like, all of a sudden you've got eight, you got team marketing, so over here just rolling faces, and, you know, poor guy Joe Schmo joins by himself or whatever, and what's he going to do? I mean, then you have, like Bruce said, you have WoW pre-maze, and then people, it's, mm. you know, it's, 
it's going to go downhill from yeah, there, basically. So I, I, it's it, a it, it's a delicate line they got to walk with yeah. that. I'm not sure. I don't know. Gonna, I, mean, I don't know how they're going to handle but, it, but I hope they handle it properly because I don't like I don't just, like the the random join system. I don't like it at all. But I am going to defend ArenaNet on this point, uh, mainly because like when we're playing Blacklight and we're dicking around on that right now, and we have five, six, eight guildies playing in a match, it's fun. One match, it's like. Hey, Zacchus, I fucking killed you three times on that game. And then the next game, it's like, shit, we're buddies, and we're going to fucking roll face in this match. It's, you know, you get that nice contrast of give and take as well. I mean, uh, obviously, it'd be nice if we were always on the same team, but it's kind of nice to play against each other, too. Yes, if, it's you fun to choose choose to, if you choose to, it's fun. Like, yeah. sometimes I'll swap to the uh, other team because I just want to fight my own guys for fun. But if you're not choosing that, I don't think it should – I think you should be able to join with your friends. Everything else in this well, game about, yeah. is, is friend-oriented and team-oriented, and you can just jump in and play with your buddies no matter where you are. But then you get into PvP, and all of a sudden you can't do that? Well, how about, like, maybe a skirmish system that they have that maybe, maybe it's not as beneficial to play in these skirmish matches, but you can still play with the people you want to play with specifically? <clears throat> like maybe or what a, if you were you able know, to start a game with your team uh, and yeah, then only me, other people that started their games or it would be marked as these guys are together just, so that if you join you know what you're that, jumping into maybe maybe if they work out some sort of queue system that like well you, you're queuing up with like five guys all right we're going to try to match you with another group of five guys that are together instead of yeah. Um, instead of just having the hot, you know, the hot drop, you know, option or whatever, just jumping in. Like, keep that, but maybe have it so, like, when you join in, when you pick the list, you, you can't just hot drop if you're in a group with five people. It'll say, all right, we're going to match you up with somebody and then match you with another oh. group of five. So you're not, yeah. like I said, you don't have poor Joe Smo just trying to play a couple rounds before he goes to work, going up against Team Arcanix with eight of us, you know, rolling faces or whatever. And that's not a fun mm. experience for him. I mean, it's that, you know, maybe they have to work on that matchmaking system. Yeah, some sort of magic system. That, that, yeah, I mean something like. Um, but it ha like I play a bit of uh, League of Legends, and League of Legends has that matchmaking matchmaking system. So if I join up with three of my buddies, and we join into it, and League of Legends is a five v five or a three v three. So if I join up with four, with three of my mates, so there's four of us. It'll try and match us with as close as it can to a group of people who are playing together, as as possible. Sometimes it won't work. Sometimes it will, but it, it tries as as much as possible to get that match up. Maybe, so, yeah. Something like that maybe, would be a nice system. I just think that goes against the hot join theory of, okay, here's 16 people of all level, ra of all ability ranges, go. I, I just think it goes against that theory of playing with anyone, anywhere, anytime. It, it's just, I, I, I see where you guys are coming from, where you want to play with friends, but for that one hot join feature... I don't see it ever being implemented in that feature alone. Eight if they make people, something else, eight sweet, people don't are, get me wrong, that's Eight awesome. people are hard to get together. That's all I'm saying. Three yeah. people are easy. Eight people is hard to organize. Hey, all of you guys, let's play right now. Oh, but I'm over here doing this, and I'm over here doing this. Oh, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm free. Oh, you want to go play a game together? Sure, let's join this game. Fuck, I'm fighting you. That's my yeah. that's my point. Well, I, I think it's yeah. I think it's something Arena Nets you know in, to pull it all together or something Arena Nets gonna have to look at and and think about. I would love to actually you know be able to talk to Arena Net and see what their thoughts are on that. To be honest with you, so I'm sure they're they're thinking about something like that because it has to have come up before. Because I know a lot of people yeah. you know have been mentioning things about that in the mist and stuff. I can't join with friends or whatever. Or I get on the wrong team, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So. Uh, based on based on past experience with them. You have to know that they're they're aware of it. They're probably thinking about it. They've probably got some sort of response uh, in, in in the works or uh, in development for that for exactly that question. Because these guys aren't stupid. These guys play games. They get it. They want to play with their friends too. So I mean, the the great the greatest thing about these guys is these guys are gamers and they want to make a game that they would like to play. So of course, I, I can't imagine a world where they wouldn't have some sort of options for me to go, oh, sure, you know, Danny wants to play with, with Bruce and, and John and Tristan. We want to go into a, you know, we want to group up with four people and we want to join one of those matches and, and, and go crazy, but not in a tournament sense. So I can't yeah. imagine them not allowing us at some point to be able to do that. All right. 
Let's move on here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna grab like one or two more questions. Uh, from my experience in SPVP, how often were objectives ignored in favor of moshing in the middle? <laughs> a lot. Too much. <laughs> there, Too there was much. a decent amount of that, yeah. But I think yeah, that's yeah. also yeah, because I, everybody I, was recording with Fraps trying to make the like ultimate PvP video to put on YouTube afterwards and become yeah, famous. Exactly. So they were like, oh shit, 1v1, 1v1, let's do this! But... Yeah, <laughs> but I think I, when we get... I, yeah. I think when everybody's like, fuck, I want some glory, I need more glory, they're gonna be like, get on the point so we can win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we, I kept talking when we were playing with some of us. I was like, "Oh, you go for point ne uh, node C. I'll go for node B, and you know maybe we'll meet after that somewhere." <laughs> we always were trying to be objective based because even if you're objective based, you're gonna find people too because there's only three points in these maps. There's only so yeah, many places that these guys either. can go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to find combat, so why not take advantage of getting these points as well? I mean, uh, yes, you do get the 10 points for getting the finishing blow on a downed character, but would you rather fight for 30 seconds trying to kill that one guy for 10 points or keep those two nodes for 30 seconds and get 15, 30 points versus those 10? So that, that's my theory. I, I'm always an objective player. I'm not, you know, I, I'm relatively good at PvP, I like to think, and I can take most people on, but... If I can get the point, <laughs> yeah. If I can get the point out of it, that's just so much sweeter than oh my god, I got that one kill. Agreed. Yeah. And I'm better than you think. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, in 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 overall retrospective of the entire thing, SPVP is pretty balanced. Uh, they are continuing to work on it, and um, you know we're not gonna know we're not gonna know everything until the game comes out and people stop playing for e-fame and you know their videos and start playing a little bit more for the glory of it and and I'm, by the glory i mean rewards and they they yeah. feel a sense of accomplishment you know all of our I'm characters are getting yeah. all of our shit's getting erased so none of us are like man i have to win right now except for like the super serious hardcore people that i want to like kill and chess mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway no it's cool you guys can be cool you you're cool um, but yeah, that's about it. There's, uh, I think we've answered majority of the questions here. Um, I would like to say that for those that have been watching our podcast, we now have a lockdown schedule. Um, Mondays at 545, we go live and we will broadcast a podcast every week. Um, every now and again on Thursdays, we will have a random podcast on some sort of topic. Maybe it's a topic of the week. Maybe it's about the guild. Um, it's probably a little more goofy, a lot more drinking, and a little bit less informative. <laughs> and, it's a bonus podcast. Yeah, and we definitely yeah. bring we bring on people for that. You know, just random people. And then um, boobies. Every Wednesday, <laughs> we push our podcast to YouTube so that you can view it again. If you go to alttabme.com, you can find the links to all of that stuff. And you can also comment on our podcast and leave questions for the next podcast for next week. Um, as well, we have started adding MP3s for those who have been requesting them. They are in the description of every YouTube video. I have tried to add them to iTunes. iTunes has changed their thing a little bit. I've talked to the host that we put our stuff on. Um, they're looking into it, but let's just say it's really fucking confusing and annoying. So for now, Apple is not going to get our podcast unless somebody wants to donate us a host that works with their iTunes, uh, RSS feeds until then you can download it manually. I, you know, it's the best we can do. Um, but yeah, thanks it's for watching. <laughs> right. It's, it's not, it's, yeah, it's, crazy. it's, I think it, I think it's not so bad. So, um, yeah. let's see here, put a little, uh, outro, outro music going here. Yeah. Ding. So we wanted to say thank you for watching the alttabme.com podcast on SPVP. Please tune in next week when we talk about what we don't like about Guild Wars 2. Should be an interesting little uh, 
Little Podcast. We also might have a special guest, still working on that to see if it's confirmed, but we might have a special guest that you guys may or may not know. Uh, we will keep you updated at alttabme.com. Remember, we are still recruiting for our guild, Arcanix. We have two spots left. Only two. If you apply, make sure your application counts as we are taking them very seriously now. And once we close it, it will not open again until the game goes live. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye from alttabme.com. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not a freeze frame? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs>